Hey guys, Squiggles here. Welcome back. We have another game, and by we, of course, I mean me and Anaris, because we are dual casting now. That's right. Hold on to your hats and your sandwiches, and keep all of your kids indoors, because we are about to tear up the scene with our dual casting. We have Nichirio versus... And I totally butchered that name. And no, Anaris, go with it. Go with it. Yeah, yeah. You will, you will help me out. <clears throat> versus Inu, and he is going to be a Terran player, and there's a Zerg player as well. And it's on a very, very big map. And Anaris, why don't you tell us a little bit about the map? Oh, and by the way, what's going on? What's going on, man? You know, I'm really disappointed. I thought this was going to be Hello, Hello Kitty Island Adventure. MMI, oh, no. We that's, can just, that's my bad. Go, that's my bad. It's all right. I mean, I, I can see how you get the two games confused. Yeah, now. yeah. I mean, they're, they're pretty much replicas of each other. So Yeah. Well, yeah, we are going to be watching this match take place on GSL Terminus. And you can see the Terran base. We use this as an example. Starting position pretty high up in the actual ground area looking down south we had the ramp leading towards a natural expansion and if you keep on going south you have the third base which does have a reduced quantity of minerals only five patches instead of eight and you'll notice one vespine geyser but it is not a rich vespine geyser it's just a normal one leading out of that you can see there is a set of destructible rocks blocking off the second entrance into the third base and there's one primary entrance into each player's area which leads towards the middle of the map for zone i watch towers on a platform that's actually one uh, one little step lower than the main terrain uh, level or whatever you call it and then there's also four expansions that litter the center of the map at the 12 3 6 and 9 now squiggles it has yes. often been said that it is very strange that there is a supply depot oh. at the base of the ramp for the main base. So why don't you give us a little bit of insight as to the purpose of that depot? Okay, so I did some research online to really make sure that I understood this. And from what I can gather, the supply depot is there because Terrans are at a disadvantage on this map. So when it's a Terran versus anybody else, Terrans start with an additional four supply depots worth of supply. I believe oh. that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that sounds very accurate. I think I think that's a good working theory. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and of course, the chat is probably blowing up right now because people are like, "Oh my goodness, that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my entire life." And you know what? I actually agree with them <laughs> because that is in fact not why it's there. It's actually there so you can't wall in the the bottom of the ramp and contain people. So they. In addition to just being an incredibly open base and having a very friendly natural to take, they don't want you to be able to be walled in. So they really, really, really want there to be macro games on this map. That's completely understandable. I'm sure there's going to be one guy. There's always that one guy who's like, uh, I'm going to quit watching this video because he said that right now and leave a comment. <laughs> oh, my God, he's so stupid. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. We always get good uh, good laugh out of that. We see actually both players went for that early expansion. Not surprised to see that from Nishio. He is a big fan of expanding early and expanding just just as frequently as possible. Like every time he gets got the minerals, just bloop, another expansion going down. Yeah. But uh, Enna over here dropping his command center before the barracks actually. Well, and that's hmm. pretty ballsy. I mean, I. Wow, that that that's really ballsy. I mean, most people will go, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a big map, and the expansion is very very friendly because of this choke. You can see he has two racks already, as well as the supply depot, pretty much walling it off. Um, it's very very friendly, so yeah, you should totally expand early. But most people will at least get a barracks first, so getting it before is gonna get him quite a, or not ahead, but it's gonna keep him even with the zerg, which normally nobody ever does. Um, as far as bases, but kind of a gamble. But it looks like it's going to pay off because um, the Zerg player just wants to make a lot of drones. Yeah, and we see right now the Harvester count, actually. Terran is definitely keeping up. starting to fall behind a little bit, 26 to 29, but definitely the Mule is what's keeping them ahead in the Mineral Income. Both players, of course, gathering gas off of one geyser right now. And, yeah, I'll be looking forward to seeing how Nershia responds to this. One important thing I want to point out is that Nershia actually scouted this very early. Yeah. He sent uh, his overlord, his first overlord, over to the right, and he sent his first drone over to the left. So that's going to give him some crucial information. He knows that expansion is going down. If you look at the vision that he has, it's very up to date. And we can expect to possibly see him do exactly what he did just a second ago, drop down that third expansion, which we might not see the Terran player do. I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm expecting him. I mean, there's yeah, there's the third going down right now. There's really a couple different ways of dealing with that. One is trying to like go all in and just bust him and punishing him for taking that early expansion. Because if you take an early expansion, you're going to be light on units, at least for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's not really his style. He's going to go ahead and grab a third. And it looks like grabbing a Roach Warren as well and repos repositioning that Spine Crawler. So yeah, I mean, he, he's got a pretty cool defensive position set up right there. Yeah, I like it. He's going to be able to put a queen in between the uh, the evolution chamber and the spine crawler. Yeah. That'll complete that wall there. So any Hellions that decide to run past it are going to uh, become very thwarted. And I just like to point out right now, my cat actually just went behind my monitor and is now poking his head up above the monitor looking down at me. How freaking cute is that? Definitely way cuter than that queen who just looks kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she definitely needs to get on a Stairmaster or something and shed some of those baby pounds. Uh, Yoshio now, is actually, uh, looks like you see over here, he's busting down those that destructible debris. Now, Ina does realize that as there, you see he's actually got yep. that Marine at the bottom of the ramp. He's able to keep an eye on the destructible debris hit points. Yeah, and these Marines are really good against these Zerglings, but he has to be careful not to get surrounded. So he's being a little bit tentative, and they're just doing a little cat and mouse action right now. Similar to your cat and probably your internet cable. Oh, That's true. snap. It looks like the tech lab is under attack, and it does go down, so Stim oh, is going to get canceled. It does. That sucks. Oh, man. And that's something that just, ah, it's kind of luck of the draw, and I didn't realize it until just now. But the way that he spawned his barracks, which are used to wall off his natural, the, the tech lab is just going to be exposed. So unless he builds another barracks back like next to his natural, that's always going to be a danger. And that's just kind of the luck or unluck of the draw, I guess. Yeah, that is going to be a pretty risky thing to do. But he is going ahead and throwing down the tech lab again. And yep. if we look down at the Zerg Bane, looks like we have two dropships worth of Marines coming into the mineral line. But without Stim, they're going to be a lot less effective than they would be otherwise. Of course, uh, yeah. We have the two medevacs, so that's going to help out a good bit. The drones have transferred away. He's going to be taking down the infestation bit. Nothing that Nishio has to, do oh. to stop this. And wow. It does go down. Yeah, he, he got lucky there because his Marines don't have stim or combat shields. But fortunately, the roaches were as about, about as out of position as they possibly could have been and still been in the Zerg base. So fortunate there. But it looks like Nishio is going to um, respond by taking a ninja forth. Yep, and you see, he is he is going ahead at the infestation pit again at his natural expansion. So that's yep. a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to defend than having it off in the main <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, not, it, not really going to be dropped so much when it's in the middle of two other bases. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know, you look at the way the kind of the game dynamics are going here with the player spawning positions. Oh, we'll actually watch this. Is we have another drop here? Maybe. Oh, it turns around at the last second. Ah. I was going to say, you know, placing the tech, uh, the tech buildings here at the natural i oh, think no. it's a good idea uh-oh oh no oh, oh the tech lab oh, burns down again again oh that sucks and yeah here comes the barracks he's gonna lift off he is getting sick and tired of these shenanigans and i gotta say i gotta tip my hat to um the queen of blades for selecting this guy who apparently hates marine upgrades and marauder upgrades and he's just going yeah, to deny going Stim to for forever. We're 12 minutes in the game, and Stim has, um, for all intents and purposes, not been started yet. And we see, he's, yeah, he's actually making two tech labs now. Yeah. So he might be going to try to get combat shields and Stim at once. I think that'd be a good idea. He has got to get caught up on those upgrades. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see if he goes ahead and gets a couple of Marauders, too, because there are so many... Uh, roaches right now. I mean, Siege Tank's good against roaches. Siege Tank's good against, well, everything on the ground. Um, right. But Marine's not the best. And, yeah, it looks like he's going to be getting a few Marauders. So that's that's going to be good. Yeah, Ooh, the Marauders, of course, do extra damage. Oh, wow. Look at that on the uh, fifth base. Very nice. Uh, but, again, without Stim, not really able to kite the, the roaches. And the roaches doing oh. quite a bit of damage. Also, Marines, yeah, the Marines are at 1-1, so that's good, and the Zerg player only has plus one carapace right now, no range attack. It does look like he is getting a Hive right now, though, as well as Infestors, Mutas, what else does he have? A Kitchen Sink and Melee Attack uh, 1 going up, so quite yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, he does have uh, a couple a couple sinks, actually. Yeah, a couple, a couple sinks, a Dishwasher, yeah. 
Yeah, he's uh, yep. he's definitely done a shopping trip at Sears. Now, looking in the middle of the map, we can see a large number of the Zerg forces just kind of hanging out here. Those Infestors, I think, are going to have a pretty big role to play in any major engagement. With those siege tanks, uh, with those siege tanks around, you know, you could throw a couple Infested Terrans or Bro to make the siege tanks shoot at the Marines. That's something actually. I think I first saw that used in a TLO game. Oh, yeah. Ages ago. So very fun. But you see that uh, Anna is looking to take a good defensive position here at the ramp, starting the siege up, pushing forward, and Ooh. bringing the command center with them. Great fungal going off. That's crazy. And yeah, you always need a command center to um, really provide moral support for the forces. So the command center is wishing well and positive energy and stuff going out. Not, not the same kind of positive energy as, say, a medevac, which if I was a Marine, I would prefer. But, right, um, definitely. Yeah, but the command center is there just to provide moral support as it looks like he will barely hold that off, but a lot of damage done. If we look at the units lost tab, it looks like, uh, yeah, Terran's lost, or Zerg has lost about double the units. But if you look at the supplies, or the resources rather, it's pretty even. And if you look at the supplies, they're really close too. They're almost exactly the same, so pretty crazy. They are 173 to 176 right now. You can see, actually, there's a decent bit more tech, or gas, rather, invested into the Zerg army. Number of yeah. investors. He's going to be trying to charge that ramp oh, again. This time, man. he's got a bunch of Zerglings here, absorbing a lot of the damage from the tanks, actually causing a lot of splash on the Marines, while the Roaches finish it up. Nice fungal growth on top of the Terran player. Yeah, great fungals. And those fungals are always something that, like, you got to be careful of because it's far, it's it's a, it's a funny catch-22 because the Terran units are really good when they're in a ball, but they're also more vulnerable when they're in a ball. So you kind of have to, like, balance the pros and cons when you're thinking about how you're going to set up your army. You do. You do. You have to watch out because you can have, uh, of course, fungal. That's going to snare you. Oh, another attempt to break through the ramp. Oh man, this time not so many Zerglings, more Roaches. Again, more Sea Shanks are actually way back this time. Looks like Terran's gonna have a little bit of an easier time holding this off and continuing to hold this watchtower, man. This is where it's at. Yeah, you can see how much easier it is for the Terran player when he has this little tiny upgrade. Not really a big deal, but it's called Stem. Um, <laughs> and he does have it now, finally. Oh my goodness. So he's able to Stem and really hold that off quite well. Um, so yeah, bio with tanks is just such a strong unit composition, and it looks like we do have a three medevac drop going to be coming up here to the top of the map, but it looks like somebody let the zerglings know, and they are flooding up there as well to try to thwart it. They are indeed. They, uh, the uh, medevacs actually happened to go just past a zergling that was, ha was hanging around up there, and was able to catch wind of that, so knows an attack is coming. One Hellion's here doing plenty of AoE damage to oh, the Zerglings, wow. actually trying to engage the Terran at the bottom of the ramp, but the Zerglings just not uh, not quite able to put up the fight needed. Yeah, those Marines and Marauders arrive. They have two two armor and one attack, so the armor helping a lot as well as all the medevacs. So they are able to snipe that expansion and maybe get away. No, there's Corruptors, so he's not going to be able to get away, but it looks like he is actually sneaking away with one medevac, so he's going to go do some shenanigans at a different base but he it looks is, like infestors saw, uh, are in hot yeah. pursuit and yeah i was by, gonna say the infestors were chasing after him saw that he was running away yeah and there's the fungal growth and there's the spit off. all over him now i always find it's funny when infestors run because they're not so much running as how would you ca would ca call that a waddle i don't yeah, know i call it a, a waddle a hobble a hobble, anything yeah. With, anything with B's and D's and L's in the word probably <laughs> be descriptive. <laughs> Bottle. I agree. Model. They're modeling their way down. Yes, they are. And they're just popping nice. the hip and turn around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my goodness. Look at that. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight broodlords. Oh, that is going to be brood. Lordal. Oh, yeah, brutastic. I, I, Here we go. Forcing that one a bit. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Whatever, man. We got this. You see, Terran, actually, I think the siege tanks did more damage than the turrets and the Brutalords did. Oh, man. The, uh, the siege tanks. The, the wonderfully horrible thing about siege tanks. I mean, when I'm a Marine, I love siege tanks when I'm not getting siege tank rounds dropped right on top of me. Again, same thing. This time with fungal growth landing on top of the air units. It looks like Inna is still going to have air superiority. Plenty of Vikings here, but those Brutalords, yep. oh. man. 
Oh, fungal growth. Nice fungal growth, the second one, and a third fungal growth going down. And it looks like all of the Vikings are going to go down. And that's actually, that's that's awful, because that the, the Vikings were what was keeping the Broodlords at bay. So a couple of Vikings left, and they are going to be uh, doing everything they can to hold off a bajillion Broodlords. And oh, no, look, Corruptors. And look up here in the top right, you do have two different groups of Marines attacking the hatchery. The top one getting very close to dying, the Zerglings surrounding that, putting into that tech very quickly. Second attack down below it, Marines getting that hatchery dangerously close to health, or dying rather, it's one bar! Oh, the Zerglings <laughs> save it! 97 health, oh no, and the other one is at 245 health. So wow. both of the, man great double drop but not really able to kill either hatchery and that's really what he needed to do to slow down the zerg player and it looks like yeah okay so we got a good scan that's good that's good and he's gonna see enough to pretty much make even this thor wet his pants i think yeah the thors are gonna be an interesting choice the nice thing about the thors is that they have very long range. The Corruptors can't do anything to them. Yeah. So those Javelin Misters are going to be able to hit those Broodlords from very far away. The problem is they're very weak against the Zerglings. And the Fungal Growth landing on the Marines, taking those out of the equation. They were supposed to counter the Zerglings there, but definitely not going to happen as the Thors do indeed fall. Yeah, that was a great, great defensive position that Inua had. But there's just such a good unit composition and a lot of high-tech units. And good job mixing, mixing casters in the Infestors with lots of damage dealers in the Broodlords and Roaches. And then just a ton of Zerglings, too, just to, uh, you know, cause shenanigans and havoc and mayhem and all that other good stuff. Right. Now, we see, actually, that there's uh, the expansion for Enna. A bunch of SCVs transferring up there, yeah. hoping to keep that safe, at least for the moment. But there's uh, two planetary fortresses down here at the uh, the center of the 9 o'clock position, which is coming under a constant bombardment from the Broodlords. Oh, man, and there is a lot of Corruptors still, so it looks like he has air superiority as well as... Well, actually, that's all he needs is air superiority because, I mean, the Broodlords really take care of the ground superiority because he has 500 bajillion little soldiers that keep on reloading and keep fighting. And it's funny because if you look up the, at the, uh, the 12 o'clock expansion, a bunch of SCVs transferred up there, and most of them ended up dying to a Zergling oh, uh, surround on the, on the planetary fortress, which might go down this time. I don't know. Zergling's got the good surround this time. You see there's kind of swarming around, doing plenty of damage. All the while, oh. down at the 9 o'clock expansion, Brutalers are taking that out. But it looks like it's uh, maybe getting repaired there. Uh, yeah, and there is a couple of couple of Vikings they're gonna be chasing away the Broodlords at least temporarily until a flood of corruptors come and say excuse me um, I don't know if you get the memo but these skies are not clear for Terran flights we have control of the control tower for all flying and we're just letting you know very kindly that um, <clears throat> we're gonna kill you it's funny actually that that planetary fortress got down to 36 health oh before wow it was repaired. And now it's repaired, and it has 109, 110 kills right now. 111. And, yep, it looks like he is going to go ahead and ha-ha and then throw out the GG. So that was a crazy aggressive game. Uh, aggressive both in terms of actual aggression and also in terms of aggressively expanding. Both players expanding all over the map. Yeah, that was that was really a joy to watch. Really, you see these games a lot more in the GSL maps because they lend yeah. themselves, like I've mentioned before, very well to the macro-oriented style of play, which is definitely something that Nershio has excelled at. He's shown in many tournaments he definitely loves uh, expanding like a beast. And, of course, Inna trying to do the same thing but not able to hold up to the onslaught. Not really. I was impressed at how quickly he was taking bases in the beginning, though. I mean, he took his third literally the exact same time as the Zerg, which is, like, unheard of. Right, right. <laughs> Only on the GSL maps, folks. Only in the GSL maps. Well, that was an absolutely awesome game to cast, and I hope that everybody enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed casting it. I had a great time casting with my good buddy Anaris, and hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of these in the future. Yes, indeed. Uh, Hello Kitty. Can we do oh, that Oh, yes. Now? It's Hello Kitty time. <laughs> right. Excellent. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Good stuff. Yep. Thanks, guys. We will see you later.